Hey guys, it's Troy, and I wanted to share with you some of the hidden gems. And that's one of the things I try to do on this YouTube channel. And there are some pens that you're just not going to find on other YouTube channels, uh, some much bigger channels. And, uh, and that's fine, because this is about my journey and the things that I find interesting in, in my hobby of collecting pens. I don't always like the latest and the newest and the greatest and the most expensive. I actually enjoy going through a little bit of history and finding those hidden gems. And this is one of them that I've been wanting to get. This is the Eversharp 10,000 word pen. I've experienced some Eversharps. Um, Eversharp was one of the great companies that, that came out in the early 1900s. And uh, I really enjoyed like the probably the most famous as far as I know, is the Skyline. The Wall Eversharp brand is still out there in a new incarnation, but in terms of their vintage stuff, um, Eversharp was a great company, but you know, around the 1957 period or so, they started to really decline, and they got to the point where they were up for sale. This is one of those pens that came out just after the sale. So in 57, the pen division was uh, was listed for sale. Parker was interested in it. Parker decided they were going to buy the Wall Eversharp uh, pen division. The Razor division remained, um, but uh, by the beginning of January of 1958, Parker had acquired 100% ownership of the pen division of Wall Eversharp. Um, and they paid about $1.6 million for the company and established a subsidiary of, the, of their own, the Parker Eversharp Pen Company. So I'm going to read to you a description of this particular pen uh, from parkerpens.net. So after what I had just talked about, it was only a matter of months before the first Parker Eversharp cartridge fountain pen was introduced. The metal-capped Parker Eversharp 10,000 pen, also known as the number 501. In looking at it, it really doesn't resemble what you might expect of a Parker pen from that time, uh, but the cap apart, it was the father of a series of pens made by Parker Eversharp in the early and mid-1960s. And I actually have a few of those uh, here that I'm going to show you. Parker used their new sub-brand to try out different solutions with a cartridge filler, and eventually the modular nib feed as the main feature. The Parker Eversharp Sharp 10,000 pen was offered as a fountain pen, ball pen, and mechanical pencil. It had a somewhat strange cap that seemed too short for the pen, and that much is true. Taking a look at it right here, it's got a bizarre cap. You know, you've got that little bifurcated split here at the end, kind of a little V dip into uh, the very tip of that pen and then it comes where it's gold tone and you can see actually some of the section here it initially does look like it's too short you can see you've got a striped barrel uh, or, or section right here before you reach the barrel and when you go slide it on the cap doesn't come all the way down to that lip right there that's by design believe it or not so, uh, the clip was very square, with the Eversharp E engraved at the bottom in a V-shaped clip screw. Okay, let's show you that. The V-shaped clip screw right there, into that top of that cap, and of course you've got the E on there. Now, there's also some graving in here, in the cursive it says Eversharp, and on the back it does say Made in USA, with actually the Parker logo on it. Um, let's see. It also had a strange backwards, though not removable, nib collar protruding beneath the steel nib. That is actually very true. You can see a very backwards looking nib collar protruding underneath that steel nib. And if you look at that steel nib, you can see it's very angular. This particular one says that it's a broad. I can tell you that it doesn't, light, it doesn't write like a broad, though. I assure you. So the gripping section was striped and it was offered in black, red, blue, gray, green, and white. And as you can tell, this one here is the black with a gold trim, which I always found very elegant. The 10,000 pen was of course not really a Parker pen since it was both developed and made by Eversharp in the Culver City factory in California. 
but it was uh, indeed an important stepping stone for the future business ventures by Parker. And uh, just to give you a little more information history-wise, so this was like 1958. Well, in 1960, Parker introduced the Parker 45, and in 1961, Parker released the Eversharp Big E. I actually did a video on the Eversharp Big E, and I have a couple of those now uh, here sitting on my desk, and I'm going to show you some of those. As you can tell, the retail value was uh, $2.49 at the time. Uh, it does say black, and it is stamped broad, and the nib is also stamped broad, but a fairly plain box that it came in. This pen was new old stock. I picked this up off from eBay from Spear Bob, and uh, you can go to his website, and uh, you can go find his presence on eBay. I've been buying from Spear Bob for a while, and I've shared a lot of stuff of his here with you. It is a cartridge converter pen. Here is what their cartridges look like. It did come with two original cartridges, and it is their um, Eversharp Parker Parker Pen Company. It says it right there on uh, the cartridge. They're washable blue. So it did come with two original cartridges. I, however, elected not to use those. I figured I'm not going to puncture them. What I did do is you can put in a converter. This is a Parker converter. So if you've got a Parker pen with a Parker converter, it will fit a 1958 Eversharp 10,000 word pen, as well as the Big E models, uh, the Parker 45s, even though the 45 generally came with its own aerometric style filler. Okay, So I wanted to share with you, uh, when I, I showed you the history a little bit, I also shared with you that 1960 they came out with a Parker 45. This is a Parker 45 desk pen. The Parker 45 is a great, um, not a top-end pen, uh, but it is a good workhorse pen. This is the Parker 45 in the flighter version. This is the Parker 45 desk pen, like I said, and this is the 10,000 word pen. This is uninked. This is also uninked, and you can see what the Parker 45 nib looks like. Now, like I said, uh, in the uh, text that I had read, it kind of was a precursor to some of their future business, according to ParkerPens.net. To give you an idea, the style of nib that was being produced by the Parker Eversharp division on that 10,000 word pen. Now, I'm going to introduce one more. I've got two of these here. These are the Big E that came out in 1961. I'm going to share with you the nib style there. So there you've got pretty much the precursor to the Parker 45 style nib. I'm assuming that there was a great influence uh, with picking up the Eversharp uh, division and working with Parker and Eversharp combined to come out with this pen, but I believe that this was probably an influence on how they came out with the Parker 45. And the Parker 45 definitely was an influence on the, the year later, the Eversharp Big E, to capitalize on the Eversharp name in the lower end market. So, very similar nibs, very similar style between the 45 and the Big E, and probably the 10,000 pen was a precursor to the Parker 45. So definitely not in the high-end category, but the idea behind the 10,000 pen was that you should be able to write 10,000 words before you have to change out the ink cartridge, which is how they got its name. So what I decided to do was, because I showed you that I used a converter instead of one of their cartridges, I went ahead and filled it with some old Waterman black ink. I picked up a bottle of this a little while ago. I enjoy... Waterman ink and you can see right here probably somewhere around 1992 this bottle was purchased for five dollars <laughs> so um, I've got that laying around and I went ahead and filled this pen with it so let's go ahead and see how this baby writes one of the things I mentioned earlier is that it definitely even though it says broad on the nib and I shared with you um, a shot of that nib it definitely writes more like a fine 
believe it or not. I was kind of surprised. So the, come on, there we go. I, I do know this pen does not like Rhodia notepad as much as it has been able to write well on some just plain old everyday notepad. It um, Each time I've tried on a Rhodia pad, it's had kind of a hard, hard start at first. It doesn't like Rhodia quite as much. I've run across that with a lot of pens. Not every pen, not every ink even, likes every single kind of paper. So, But this is their 10... Thousand word pen. This says that it has a broad nib, but there's no way this is actually a broad. It may be stamped with broad, but it sure writes more like a fine. Since I've been using this pen, I haven't had any issues with it at all. I haven't had any ink flow problems. I've uh, been doing actually a decent amount of writing with it, but I've been also writing on regular old notepad and on photocopy paper and that kind of thing. So, all right, so this was a, a $2.49 pen from circa 1958. Obviously a cartridge converter. And historically, this is the first pen issued under the new company, under the, the new Parker with Eversharp. It is not the smoothest in the world. It's a steel nib. It's a lower end priced nib. I could probably smooth that out just a hair, but it is acceptable. I haven't had any issues, like I said, with this pen in terms of its uh, writing ability, in terms of its performance. I didn't expect a tremendous amount from 1958 on a steel nib on one of their lower end pens. I haven't been disappointed, quite honestly, because I got about what I expected on a pen. But I wanted this one here um, because of its historic significance uh, within the Eversharp lineup within Parker being the first cartridge pen uh, that was issued under the combined company between Parker and Eversharp and 10 years before I was even born. So, uh, And this was just in fantastic condition. I had seen these online. I had literally been stocking one for about a year and I didn't like the prices that I was seeing on them. Quite honestly, I paid $25 for this, and I had some eBay bucks that were saved up, so that brought the cost down significantly for the purchase, and it came with free shipping from Spearbob. Um, and uh, it, it brought this pen to way below any other uh, 10,000 uh, pen that I had seen uh, for sale, whether it was on Etsy or... Um, Mercari or on eBay and this was new in box so I'm glad that I waited and I was patient stocked it a little bit so anyway there you go um, I, I enjoy some of the the history with these uh, you know the big E ever sharp uh, pens that came out the Parker 45s they all are relatives they all came out of the same uh, somewhat design and the, the same kind of uh, targeted market so if you're looking for something decent, I I can't complain about that. And if you can find a big E, I've got one in a medium nib. You can see it even still has the uh, the chalk mark on it. And uh, this one isn't a broad, and that broad writes very well. Um, actually, the broad on this, much broader than this broad, as I recall. So, anyway, there you go. Eversharp 10,000 word pen.